This is world's first 3D printer blender and you don't want to have this in your kitchen because it's just way too powerful. The power comes from the gas turbine which spins the blades so fast that they disassemble themselves mid-air. And the blades you see in the blender right now, this is only phase one. In this video we are going to test five different blade designs. Okay, rotor designs, not all of them have blades. And keep in mind, this is not how to do it video. You should never replicate this project by yourself. We are professionals and we know what we are doing. This video is sponsored by PCBWay. Regular blenders use electric motors, which make a lot of sense. My blender uses gas turbine and compressed air up to 9 psi, which is enough to blow this thing up. I was literally using shell to protect myself. The turbine I do from my last project where I built multi-stage compressor. I just removed compressor section and built blender on top of it. The whole project contained mostly 3D printed parts, combination of resin and FDM prints. Things like bolts, shaft and couplers are not 3D printed. In this video we are not only building a blender, we are also testing 5 different unordinary plate designs and see in slow motion how they perform. So better let's get started. Before we can start building the blender, we have to 3D print all necessary things. This 3D printed blender contains four main parts. Two bottom parts which hold the rest of the blender connected to the turbine. The transparent part is the glass for the blender. Inside there all action will happen. Mine is not the real glass, this is printed with resin and clear coated. I didn't make it, I ordered it from PCB way, and it's just insane. It looks like a glass. And the lead, lead is kinda fancy, it has a little window and light. All the things except the PCB way part are printed with ABS and for printer I use Creality K1C. K1C is like pretty well known and loved K1, but the C stands for carbon. This is an upgraded model and it can print materials that K1 cannot, like carbon fiber nylon or any filament that has carbon inside. Also the ABS is not a problem for this printer and everything that I printed turned out absolutely amazing. I finished them off with the black paint to increase the performance. This blender will be powered by a gas turbine. I stole this from my last project where I built a new stage centrifugal compressor. So I removed all the compressor things till I was left with only turbine section. I got the new shaft and connected the turbine to it with a coupler. Then I assembled the turbine back together and this section is done. The rest of the building is pretty much screwing all the blender body parts together in the right order. For that I used M4 bolts. When it's finally done, it looked like this. And I have to say, I'm really happy how it turned out. Also, it spins just so smoothly. I was so excited to do the test, to have any idea with what I'm dealing with. And this happened. By the sound, we can already tell that this thing has some power and spins at extreme RPM. The resin printed plate didn't survive even the dry test. So some redesigning have to be made and to be honest I am worried about my safety while doing this video. I still ran one test more because the last one was kinda short. Now I use the least aggressive blades. This one actually doesn't have blades but you get the point. This time luckily nothing didn't fly into pieces. The blender seems to work and we can now move on to start testing the blender and different plate designs. The first rotor we are going to test uses trimmer lines for cutting. It works exactly the same way as a trimmer, or like people like to say weed eater, which sounds way cooler actually. Anyway this is the only rotor that is printed with FDM printer, well the thing that holds the lines and will be connected to the shaft is. For this one minor assembly is required. The weed eater lines have to be pushed through this cylindrical printed thing, connected to the coupler and this is pretty much it. Next I connected the rotor to the turbine shaft and it's time to see what this blender actually can do. I 
I started with this because this is the least aggressive blade design. Okay, rotor design, let's be real, there is no blades. I had the lowest expectation for this one, but still, I can say it did pretty good job. With the cucumber, it worked really well. But it didn't really wanna cut the tomato. It more just spins it around. Eventually, it did cut the tomato to nice tomato soap. So you can say, this one exceeded my expectations. And keep in mind, this was the safest rotor we are going to test in this video. PCBWay made this video literally possible. Without PCBWay absolutely excellent 3D printing service, I wouldn't have this blender glass. Which is not even glass, it's actually printed with resin, but it looked like a glass, so that's why I call it the glass. Without this piece, I wouldn't make this video. PCBWay is known for making high quality PCBs that ships you in no time. But if you're wondering, do they have 3D printing service also? The answer is yes. PCBWay has excellent 3D printing service with a lot of different material options, including metal. If you want to order something from PCBWay, all you have to do is to upload your 3D model, select the material and PCBWay will do the rest. If this is not impressive enough, PCBWay also has CNC machining, sheet metal fabrication and even injection molding service. If you need something but you don't have right machine skills or tools, PCBWay is your one-stop solution. Big thanks again to BCB Way for making this video possible. But now it's time to continue with the testing. Plate number two. Moving on to the next one. The idea behind this rotor is impact force. Here is pretty much two rotating hammers. The things we put in the blender will be hit by the flat face. In theory, it should smash into pieces whatever is going to hit. This rotor is printed with resin and no assembly is needed. I only had to connect the coupler with way too long bolts. I mean, it worked for sure, but not as I expected or hoped. The thing is, the rotor spins so fast, only the really top of the flat face hit the cucumber. And instead of impacting it, it slices the cucumber in small amounts with every rotation. With the tomatoes, well, it just spins them around for a while, when they finally get destroyed. Not gonna lie, it's probably the most boring rotor we are testing in this video. So it's time to bring out the big guns. Moving on to something that for sure looks a bit creepy. Let's call this medieval rotor, because I got inspired from this, from some type of medieval weapon. It should work similarly to the last one because the impact force. The difference between this one and the last one is the fact that the faces are a bit curved and they don't stand at the same plane. Also there are spikes, which are extremely sharp and I hurt myself multiple times while removing supports. For real they are sharp. This one is printed with ABS like resin like the last one and it doesn't require any assembly. I don't know what to expect from this one. So let's spin this up and see what it does. It worked better than the last one, I would say. This is what I hoped for because this is my favorite design, at least by the look. Even though it more grates the cucumber than smashes it, but still it's a success. With the tomato, again same story, it spins them around a bit before they get destroyed. Here is a thing actually, looking at slow motion footage, it looked like it takes forever. But at actual speed, it's not that bad at all. Everything that was in there is completely smashed, so thumbs up for this one. This is my favorite one so far for sure. We have two left and finally we start using actual plates. This one that we are going to test next is fully 3D printed with resin, including those sharp teeth. It's pretty simple to understand what I was trying to accomplish here. Three different size saw blades are stacked on top of each other. It should cut the cucumber at multiple different heights and depths. I'm afraid that this one doesn't survive the test because it's not printed with ABS like resin. It's printed with standard resin. I choose the standard resin because I wanted those tooths to be completely rigid. Not that bad of an idea, except it might fly into pieces. So let's see how it goes.
This was not what I expected. This was the most boring and worst performing plate so far in this video. Also, it didn't break, which is sad for content. It's actually pretty simple to understand why it performed as it did. The blade cut deep lines into the cucumber and nothing else happened. The blades have nothing to track the cucumber and reposition it for different angle of cutting. But the racing blade the blades did their job and did cut the cucumber without breaking. So it's not a failure, just the design is terrible for this type of application. Maybe that's why we don't see saw blades in the blenders. And now finally we have reached the highest level. This rotor uses actual plates for cutting. I don't mean 3D printed plates, real metal paper knife plates. The rotor where I attach the plates are 3D printed with ABS like resin and it's pretty much the same thing that exploded before, but it's an upgraded version. Hopefully it survived this time. Hopefully. Before we can use it I have to glue the plates to the rotor. Yes I will glue them in there. At first I wanted to use some bolts to hold them in place. But those plates are undrillable so I have no other option to glue them in place. But the fit itself is really tight, I believe it can handle it. But ok, the moment we all have waited for. Let's see what this thing does. There's no question about it, this is the best one we have tested in this video. It cut the cucumber like nothing, and it works similarly like an actual blender. It makes a lot of sense because this is the only rotor that has actual plates, and by the shape it's the closest to actual blender blades. But this one has one big big problem, it flies into pieces. The blades flew around the blender at extreme speed and broke the glass completely. Thank god none of them made their way out of the blender. Nobody didn't get hurt. One piece of the blade even got stuck in the resin printed glass. Still, I like this one the most because this performed by far the best and it gave a nice ending for the video. At the end of the video, what can we conclude? Well, don't 3D print blender at home. Like I mentioned before, this video was not how to 3D print blender at home. By my recent experience, I highly recommend not to do it. I always share my 3D models for free with you, but this time I won't. I just really don't want you to do it. But anyways, it was still fun to watch different plate designs. Let me know in the comments below which one you liked the most. I liked the first and the second one the most, because they performed and one fly into pieces. Which is good for the content. Before we say goodbye to each other, maybe consider liking this video, because if this video gets 20,000 likes, I will fix the blender, come up with new blade designs and I will put stuff there that should never be put in the blender. Looking forward to it. Not really. Anyway, thank you for watching, thank you for subscribing, thank you for not doing this by yourself and see you guys next time. Bye.